So we'll hopefully get a response back on that sometime next week. I'll board that over. Hi, Raphael. Hey, how was that this morning? Good. I I, I met Hector with Red Latinx Hub. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. I think the three of us will go maybe grab some lunch and yeah. talk about some things. Yeah. So good. He's doing a lot of amazing things. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Janelle, so let's give Janelle one more minute, and okay, yeah. if she's not here. We'll get started. We do have a more. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yep. Are you, are you giving dogs away? Is this One. I took, there's three of them and I took two. <laughs> and the other one still needs to be rehomed. It's a shepherd husky mix. Mm -hmm. By now, probably four months. Oh, it's a puppy. Oh, uh, yeah. It's you. <laughs> They're all cute when they're little. Let's start. I don't have a big yard. Yeah. You know, you go, you go away on the weekend and you know, we're going to watch it. That's dogs. why I never got one, but my kids don't usually go with me. Yeah, they think I see go away anymore. <laughs> oh, she's so trying to get in. That's that. What's it be? Oh, she's going across. Oh, she's, she's going across. This right. Thing. Catch. Nice. <laughs> yeah, catch. Just put them on the floor. <laughs> yeah, because no, like, <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> that's. I think the online yeah, schedule three in the still has it listed over there. Oh, oh does it? No. I think, think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. this didn't write for me. That's why I would go to the meeting for a long time. I don't want their dog for a while. So when I countered that, yeah. 15 years after we had it, I was in my car. Oh, never would have been. So when I started my habit over there, it's too upset when you die. You know, on her turtle that she had for 19 years finally died. And that was tough. And then you know, tortoise. No, it was just. But they were good uh, about red tail or something. Oh, okay. So if somebody goes. Over, it was like 19 years. She's like, the well, the kids brought it home. Yeah. So they're just not. They got it at the fair. Their their <laughs> friends got it at the fair, and it was like this big. You know, and she's oh, like, that's yeah, flushable. Like, okay, we can keep it. Like, you know, 18 years later, and it was a cool pet actually. Oh, yeah. Oh, remotely. Not to check across. Just say yeah. Remotely, a board member. And yes. so uh, our last four day, day, five days at a time, the and then he would get up and, so that, and so walk around for just cause a little bit and then go back to sleep, you know, find a blanket hide under there. And, and if not, they can't the 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 put in the morning, but they can't like come. Come. If he's yeah. okay. awesome, you step on your foot up here, but it just freaks you out. And after a while, I got used to it. I must have watched him across the kitchen a hundred times. This is here. All right. All right. Set. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, thank you all for attending this uh, morning. Uh, the recording secretary will now take roll. Ma'am. All righty. Chair Rivera. Here. Board member Anderson. Here. Board member Renteria. Here. Board member Boswell. Here. And alternate board member Myers. Here. Let the record reflect, reflect that all board members are present. Okay, item two, it's remote participation under AB 2449. Is that needed? We have no one participating due to just cause remotely, so we can move on. Okay, not needed today, thank you. Uh, item number three, modifications to the agenda. Any modifications? I don't believe we have any modifications to the agenda. Okay. All right, moving on to uh, item number four, public comments. So this is a time when any person may address matters not listed on this agenda, uh, which are within the subject matter of the jurisdiction. The public may comment on agenda items when the item is called. Each speaker is allowed three minutes. So if anyone is in chambers and wishes to comment on something that is not on the agenda today, uh, you may raise your hand now. All right, it looks like we have no public comment. Thank you. 
All right, item number five, we have approval of minutes. So we have had, uh, we, ha we actually have two sets of minutes, one from our meeting Mar on March 28, 2024, and one from the meeting, the special meeting held on April 16, 2024. Do we have any changes to the minutes? Okay, the minutes for the meeting, uh, seeing that there's none, the minutes for the meeting held on March 28, 2024, and the minutes for the special meeting held on April 16, 2024 are approved as submitted. Okay, moving on. All right, now we have item six, uh, staff changes. And uh, I, like, I have the wonderful pleasure to introduce our new Chief Economic Development Officer, Scott Adair. Scott? And introduce yourself and yeah, my name a little is, bit about um, My name is Scott Adair. Hello. I am the city's new chief economic development officer. Uh, I'm just completing four weeks with the city, so very new. Uh, excited to be working with the city and on this team. Uh, I came from Humboldt County, where I was managing economic development and workforce development programs in that division for the county of Humboldt and was also the general manager for the Humboldt County EIFD. Uh, prior to that, I worked in private sector doing economic development. Uh, just prior to Humboldt County was the vice president of economic development for Phillips Edison Company, which is a nationwide real estate investment trust. Um, very happy to be working alongside all of you and looking forward to all of the great things that we're gonna accomplish together. So. Uh, thanks, Rafael. Yeah, well, very excited to have you on board. Do we have any questions uh, from the board? Any comments? Welcome. Welcome. Okay. <laughs> Thank, so Thank you. Thank okay. yeah. you. Any public comments? Sure. Welcome. And we look forward to seeing the holistic yeah. uh, report and plans of action going forward. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome on board. All right. Thank you, Scott. Item 6.2 uh, Introduction of Public Arts Coordinator, Meredith Knudsen. From the city of Napa. Thank now you. you're here in Santa Rosa. So welcome. Yeah, very excited to be here. I've been here just a little bit longer than Scott for I think it's three months now. Um, as Rafael mentioned, I come from the city of Napa there where I managed their public art program for about five years. Uh, there I coordinated a lot of different initiatives from the Napa Lighted Art Festival to the Art Walk, utility box wraps, along with many community um, events. Uh, before that, I've been in the arts for about 15 to 16 years, um, running events for Wix.com. I was our West Coast events director. I've um, been also working um, with Becoming Independent, SFMOMA. Um, so, but I'm really excited to be here in Santa Rosa, um, especially with a great team. So I'm looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Welcome, Meredith. Um, any questions or comments from the board? All the comments? Welcome, Merida. Thank you. Same thing applies. <laughs> We're looking forward to seeing uh, the holistic plans emerge. Okay, wonderful. All right, moving on quickly here. Uh, item number seven, we have a new advisory board member. And I have the pleasure to introduce Stephen Boswell, general manager of the Flamingo Hotel. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you. To share. Hi, I've, uh, I've been here since January. I moved here from Vail, Colorado. And um, I'm... Um, uh, I've been with the company that currently manages the Flamingo for the past year um, uh, for approximately 14 years and Palm Springs uh, for Vail, Palm Springs for that Lake Arrowhead, California, and um, in um, Lake Havasu, Arizona. And um, so I've been on several of these uh, boards that represents this nature, and I look forward to being here. Thank you. Well, welcome again, Stephen. Uh, members of the board, questions? Well, good to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All the comments? Welcome, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Now we have uh, item number eight um, new business. Uh, and uh, we have 8.1 scoring results on review, and Meredith. Newton will be uh, presenting the scoring results and review uh, staff recommendations for the event support funding for this second cycle of 2024. Thank you. Meredith? We just uh, connect here. 
So today we'll be reviewing the um, 2024 to 2025 event support funding, um, which you all participated in with the virtual first round of scoring. Um, I will go through um, the criteria and um, the results. Sorry, just one second. It's not. There we go. So um, we've we've had a lot of applications this period. Being new to um, not only the city of Santa Rosa but this event process, um, you know, this I was told this was a large amount more applicants than what we've normally get. Uh, this year we also uh, did a lot of social media posts outside of Sonoma County and neighboring counties, as we found that that was really important to start to look at how are we getting new events and how are we putting Santa Rosa on a map for destination events um, and getting on others' radar. So um, we advertised in Portland, uh, Los Angeles, uh, let's see, San Jose, and um, I believe it was Seattle as well. Um, so altogether, um, we have 36 applicants, uh, four were ineligible. Um, as you know, we also have the Community Promotions Fund. Um, so we split these up for SRTBIA and Community Promotions. Four of the SRTBIA events are also eligible for Community Promotions, which we'll be meeting later today to review those as well. 65% um, of these were new applicants, um, which I think is really important and really great that um, we're starting to look at um, people coming to Santa Rosa that haven't thought about having their event there. Um, we have a, about 695,000 in event funding that was requested, and we only have 100,000 to give. Um, so when we're looking at that, it's also really important to see how are we distributing this, um, which events have received funding in the past, and how are we funding these new events so people can get a start here in Santa Rosa. The scoring um, was split up into three questions. Um, one was how well does the event meet the authorized uses of the BIA funding um, to promote and encourage tourism, which will benefit the operators of lodging establishments, paying assessments through the promotion of scenic, recreational, cultural, and other attractions designated designed to increase overnight visits to the area. The second one is um, how does the event support funds meet the guidelines for eligible expenses? I mean, this is really important too, um, looking into what um, we, we aren't paying for admin costs and we won't be paying for labor. So, so how will the, our uh, funding support the, within those guidelines? Um, and last, again, how is it, uh, the funds meet the guidelines. So it's not the sole source of funding for the event, um, but be used for organization staff, employee wa wages or salaries. And again, that's important to note, it's not the sole source of funding for the event. Um, and so, as you'll see in our staff recommendation, and this could be a topic of discussion for you too, is that we want to look at these events as seed funding, um, but they're not relying on us in order to have the event. So I've broken it down here for a recommendation. Um, you will see the average score, um, the amount requested, and the amount that city staff is recommending. First, um, we have pride. Um, which scored at the top of it 11.6. They're requesting $40,000 and we're recommending we get $12,000 from um, SRTBIA and $18,000 we'll be recommending to community promotions. Um, this is the same amount that they received last year of $30,000. The Wine Country Faceoff um, is requesting $10,000 and we are re recommending um, that we, they received $10,000. Um, and also note on this that I've did an asterisk to the new events um, for the city of Santa Rosa. Cheese Fest is next um, with a request of $50,000 and a recommendation of $25,000. Country Summer requesting 65,000, recommended 25,000. Growlers Hockey Season requesting 15,000, recommended 6,000. The Antique Fair, requesting 10,000, recommended 6,000. Beer City, requested 14,400, recommended 5,000. The Sharing Institute, requested 50,000, recommended 4,000. Storytelling Festival, rec uh, requested 7,500, recommended as 4,000. Railroad Square Music Festival, requested 24,235. We're recommending 2,000 from SRTBIA, and we'll be re recommending later 20,000 from Community Promotions. Um, 
um, SoCo Market uh, requested 10,000 and we're recommending 500. Luther Bourbon Holiday is requesting 3,000 or recommending 500. And then you will see the remainder under that scored under seven will not be receiving any funding. Um, Winter Blast we are recommending through community promotions later, but that recommended through community promotions is not um, secured, remember, because that's also a selection panel that's open for discussion. Why the slides aren't. There we go. Um, so the recommendation today is to approve event support funding for October 1, 2024 to June 30th, 2025. All right, thank you, Meredith. Um, I'd like to open it up for questions or discussion. I had a couple of thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, two and three on the scoring sheet, to me kind of, and I'm probably just not understanding it, kind of blended together in my opinion. Um, I had a difficult time differentiating when I was scoring. Um, I mean, the bottom, I just kind of went, well, are they making money or no? For the questions you're talking about. Yeah, for the okay. scoring, one, two, and three. Um, that was, it's probably a Todd thing. Well, and that's a good suggestion for next year when we look at this. Um, being new into it, I followed the guidelines from last time, but I'm more than happy to revisit these questions that we're scoring on. Right, yeah. Okay. And then another thought I had, um, if it's a reoccurring event, I think that we should have some sort of um, data on like how many stays it actually produced the year prior, um, possibly capping the support at X amount of years. Um, it just seems like there's a lot of events in here that we're continually funding mm -hmm. that, um, you know, they're either making money or they, they should be making money at this point. If I may, through the chair, Thanks. Um, just in staff response, uh, given the municipal budget situation that we face as a city, um, and it's systemic throughout the state, many jurisdictions, uh, including the state and the county, are looking at budget deficits. We are discussing internally how to make the use and deployment of these funds um, more efficient and have greater impact. And potential limiting of the number of years for funding receipt is something that potentially could be discussed. Uh, I think there's a great deal of interest in seeing this as seed funding, uh, but also not creating essentially barriers to other events who may be new um, and looking to receive funding, but are at a disadvantage because of other events that continually receive funding year after year. So just that to say, uh, in the future, we will likely be bringing a discussion to your body to have to actually agendize, to have this as a study session discussion and to get your feedback on that. Um, and we'll work with the chair and with staff to make sure we get that on the agenda for a, a future meeting, so. I think that would be great, thank yeah. you. Yeah, would that be something that we want to include in the application process mm -hmm. as to as this has your event been funded in the past? That is a, a, uh, a question. Please provide mm -hmm. uh, details. Yeah. Right, or where was your that. hotel block or where did you right. know, and, and some so, so, on sort of evidence that, that actually produced. Right, evidence that there's. I do think there's benefit in having, you know, Santa Rosa events that are, that we know we're going to support every year because they were known for that, you know, and, um, <clears throat> and we want to be a part of it, but I was brought this up at several meetings and, and I, I, I back him on this. I think that, yeah, I think that there's a lot of these that we should, it's just an additional, an additional question that we should ask that could just, you know, further, um, just make the, the scoring more, um, more thorough. Please. But I don't know what it takes to get an additional I mean, we really need to decide as a as a board. Do we add an additional question? What is this? Uh, one second. So, 
Disco. <laughs> Crank it up. Uh, sorry. Um, did you, were you finished? No, yeah, I was done. I just think, I mean, as a board, we can actually decide, is that an additional question that we want to ask for next time? I mean, I know it's not until Q2, so. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I was about that a couple times, and Peter and I both discuss it, and, yeah, we agree that, um, yeah, it's a it's a legitimate question that should be asked. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, one insight on it would be, and I'm not sure if this has been done in the past, is that um, we all review the, in, the uh, event reports here mm -hmm. so that the board can see with those questions on the event recap report on, on, mm -hmm. on how did that perform, what was their um, amount of hotel stays, what were their hotel packages, um, because having that insight going into this, then you would know, but, it, but without seeing that, we won't know if we're refunding something that didn't perform as well last time but what if it's a new person exactly in the position? yeah yeah right like i've been here mm -hmm. right yeah exactly that's, that's why i think the question is i have one other thing as well if i may um on question two and i may be getting my boards mixed up i apologize um it says you know venue fees advertising event marketing inside or outside of the area to designate to promote overnight stays to me, that should read as outside the area because if you're local, you're probably not going to get a hotel room. Mm -hmm. Or I don't feel that anyone within an hour of the area, maybe even two hours, would be looking for lodging or an Airbnb. <laughs> they're going to drive back home. I think they're going to drive home. You know, like for monster trucks, I always use this example. You know, when my kids were small, I'd go to monster truck. But the farthest I ever went, was Ukiah, and I didn't stay there. I drove back that night. Agree, Todd. And I will say that, like, that is the one. I mean, I look at everything when I, I'm scoring these applications, and but the percentage of yeah of, of out of town visitors as opposed to in town is 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 probably like my bottom line. You know, like the most important thing to me. And we all we do see that, but you're right on the event recap, we see it. Like, so they tell us what they think it's going to be. And then we see on the event recap. And so that is why it's actually really great that we have been here, you know, so we know these events and someone coming into this position or in, onto this board would not know that. Right. So, yeah. I, would. I think some of these out it's, of town it's, it's a were optimistic <laughs> on the applications. We just see it right on the application, but then we don't see it on the, we don't see it until the recap, right? And so but we've already made our decision. So yeah. Steven? And is there a way, how is that recorded? How is that uh, uh well, scored? So after we after we approve, we we look at all the receipts and we look at their we get zip codes from all their attendees and then we can you know judge it. But when we're um but do the hotels report on on an event that they do to visit Santa Rosa for, for certain when we do hotel packages, right? But mm -hmm. it's not so yeah. And for and some yeah, and for this as well. Yeah. But it's we've already scored. So that's why I think having the question ahead of scoring is actually a good idea. So we'll note that. Yeah. And I know that Peter in the past always brought up, well, we gotta find just three, four major events and then Right. The, the feedback was exactly. well, we also yeah. want to provide seed money so exactly. it's like I uh, think that's important but I think we're kind of we're all giving this a, a better yes. fine tuning and, as I mean, to what it was some years ago I know that the city you know maybe cannot get more money but possibly I don't know about next year's budget you know but depending on what happens with the TOT we might be able to put more money in next year mm -hmm. yeah. so that's something to I mean, so we don't, we, we've always matched in the past and I've, I've only been here for two years and that's just kind of how it's always been done, but we don't have to do that. Right. I don't, I don't right. think there's nothing in the ordinance that says that we have to match the city. And so, yeah, I don't know. That's came up with something that. that we can talk about. <laughs> All right. Um, any, any uh, other comments? All right. We're going to open it up for the public comments. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, Eric Frazier. your name? Yeah. I wear a few different hats. In this hat, I wear the hat of the executive director for the uh, uh, nascent uh, sharing institute. 
which has been a work in progress for a couple of years, but we are new and we're here seeking seed funding. And it's interesting when we see, uh, first of all, that information that was just flashed on the screen hasn't been shared with the public. So it's not connected to the agenda. It's not there. This is the first time I'm seeing it. And so from the bottom of my heart, thank you for recognizing our, our application. And it's great that we made it above the cut line. But I have to remind you that the sector that we're serving has been paying into the BIA for decades, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And this is actually the first time an event has come forward to tell their story ad adequately and accurately to the public. Our research area for this event takes in four counties. And because of that, we believe that in a physical event that will be drawing a lot of people, especially in the March, uh, when uh, hotel bookings are shallow. We're a new event, as I mentioned, so it is a little bit interesting to see how events uh, reoccur in funding. Here we see somebody who, for as long as I've been attending this, these meetings, has received a lot of money, a lot of money, and they're a for-profit event. And here again, they're at the top of the list in this cycle, $25,000. I might suggest, because this has been an ongoing problem in the city's BIA uh, engagement of funding, reoccurring funding in these organizations, you might take a slightly different tact and just follow along with their sponsor applications. So an event like Country Summer probably has a sponsor category in the $5,000 range. It certainly would make sense for the city's logo and Visit Santa Rosa and what have you to be present on the stage and so on and so forth. But you can do that for less money and not stop on the toes of, of organizations that are trying to make a difference civically using money that they've helped produce for the city <laughs> and launching a new, a new process. So I appreciate the $4,000, certainly we'd take it. I'd request that you move that up to at least $5,000 so that you can at least hit the mark as one of our sponsors. <laughs> but um, it is a little bit disappointing to see that even though we check all the boxes as far as being a new event that's looking for seed funding, that's not requesting funding solely that we have a lot of buy-in, we have sponsorship, we have a compelling agenda. We have speakers, uh, let me just tell you a little bit without mentioning their name because I'm not sure if I'm in front of friends or foes when I discuss this because of the topic that we're bringing forward civically with our money. But I passed Attorney General for the United States under a Democrat uh, regime. Uh, we have probably the leading travel authority in the world. We have the acolyte to Apple products who made a huge splash, wrote 12 books. These, uh, and we have other people we're in discussion with, but these are incredible people that are meant to draw a crowd and meant to draw interest and energize around the subject because it is controversial. And this just sort of proves our point that even with the honesty, the respect to our visitors and to our business and our community. This is sort of how it ends up, but I do appreciate at least the $4,000 support. I really make a case, however, that it should be 50,000. That's what we put in for. And that's, uh, that's a fair price to pay for the investment that the sector has made and the SRTBIA organization. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Eric. All right, so uh, this item actually requires a motion. So uh, if there aren't any other discussions, I'd like to go ahead and uh, move so we can make a motion to, um, second, to approve event support for the application submitted, received, scored, and discussed, and the recommendation provided. Make a motion. Motion. Okay. Uh, I'll second. Second. All in favor to approve the uh, recommendation uh, for the event support application submitted, scored, and discussed for the second cycle of 2024. Say aye. 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 
Okay. Uh, the recording secretary will now take roll call. All right, roll call. All right, Chair Rivera. Aye. Uh, Board Member Anderson. Aye. Board Member Renteria. Aye. Board Member Boswell. Aye. And alternate Board Member Myers. Aye. All right, let the record reflect that this motion passes unanimously. Thank you. All right, moving on to 8.2, we have a um, 2024 first cycle event support summary report. Uh, Janelle Myers will be providing a brief summary of those events that were funded during the first cycle of the year. Um, I, have um, I have it here to attach to the agenda okay. and then I have the best. Yeah, so I mean, basically here is the most important we've done the last uh, two quarters, the marathon, uh, thank you so much. Snoopy, Snoopy's uh, hockey tournament, the beer fest, the good ones, um, it equals 82,500. Yeah. Are we able to print out? Um, Just, yeah. But I do have one Zoom thing in. to uh, change. Um, the hot air balloon classic did not actually um, receive funding. They, they chose to opt out this year. So that check was actually never got, so that's a, yeah. And the, the cheese festival, they did submit for funding, but um, then they, they, they backed out last minute because of, uh, and also it was uh, the hot air balloon classic, they didn't, um, they didn't meet the guidelines uh, because we've been, uh, been focusing more on you know, the marketing aspect of it, and it can, you know the funding cannot go to administrative work or anything like that. So um, they realized that they didn't qualify, so they backed out. Is this a duplicate? This country music. This is from this year. From this year. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. First, what we were looking at earlier is for next year. Yeah. Oh. This is what has already been paid out. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. thank you. Yeah. Except for the. Like so, so what does this mean when it's 20,000 that changes and they requested 30? That's what they requested, and yeah, right? And then the tickets cut. And for then, 20. Yep. And so they didn't want that additional time. And the scores. No, they, they well, okay. we couldn't find yeah. that, so. Yeah. 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 yeah, I need to, uh, yeah. So um, hang on, because uh, this is Brown Act uh, <laughs> meeting. I need to follow the protocol. Sure. So um, I'll, I'll open it up for uh, this public comments. And then. And we put it, we'll put it on the in order report as well. Both this and the presentation are attached to the agenda. Are they? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Do we have a printout of the, that spreadsheet? Um, I don't have printouts of that spreadsheet or presentation. But they're online. They're online. They're online. Yeah, yes. they're online. Great. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Janelle. Uh, any comments from the board? Questions? Okay, so that was the first cycle that ended uh, in sometime in March. Uh, Jack? Uh, uh, the no, it was through June thirtieth. The, the application deadline was in March, but the events occurred after. Yeah, that. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, public comments. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So. As I see that, and I, I'm sorry, I didn't see the attachments on the agenda when I countered this meeting a couple of days ago. So they must have just went there like yesterday or something. Okay, I got it. All right, so when we see Country Summer here, and again, what a great event, uh, it attracts a lot of people, but holy moly, I've seen that, that particular event come up probably every year for funding for the last five or six or seven, maybe eight years. Boy, they must have banked over a hundred thousand dollars by now, maybe a hundred and twenty. Um, wow, for a profit making event to have that money out of pocket from the city is pretty amazing. I mean, it's pretty staggering, quite frankly. Uh, and it is interesting to me why that aggregate amount that's paid out to these events isn't a part of this discussion. Certainly there's been a line. Every time Country Summer comes up, actually, I think it triggers this discussion. Somebody raises their hand and, oh, I feel uncomfortable about funding reoccurring events, especially profit-making events. But you go ahead and do it, <laughs> and nothing really changes. But yet we see hundreds, 
probably, I would imagine that's 120, maybe $150,000 going to a for-profit event when a smart negotiator probably with a for-profit event probably could have bought sponsorships for around 50 grand covering that same period. Leaving the money for startup, new ideas, innovation, seed money, it's interesting. As you know, putting on another hat, we're researchers of the city's finances and how things are spent and so on and so forth. And this is really disconcerting to us. It's disconcerting not only that we don't have a seat on the board representing tax paying uh, BIA collecting uh, organizations that are in the short term rental space, uh, and, and which is really quite interesting in and of itself. But here, it's, it's really sort of blatant what's going on with this funding mechanism. When you get down to it, and when you start scratching up these things and following the money, usually it's not a really good thing that surfaces. Why that extra spending? On the one hand, it appears that you could have spent 50 grand and got the same type of publicity, and I'm just guessing that's a number off the top of my head, but yet I think 120 grand was spent. And it's always this sort of pleading poverty. Oh, I don't, we don't have enough money. We know the city is going to be coming, you know, uh, under more and more duress financially. But yet, it's just, it's just like right there in your face. What's going on in the organization? So obviously, there's something more to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, moving on to item... 8.3, uh, 2024 annual report and 2025 work plan. And um, I'm going to go ahead and provide a quick update regarding the uh, annual report and, and work plan. Uh, so you're all very well aware that uh, per the ordinance, we, we are required to produce an annual report as well as a work plan each year. And uh, we've been doing so for the last uh many years as 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 long as the ordinance has been um was put in place in 2010. Um, so i produced the uh report for the last several years and um it seems like the past two three years i've struggled a little bit with just finding data that is specific to santa rosa so um we want to make a greater effort to definitely identify that data working with our partners, Business Center Rosa, as well as Sonoma County Tourism and others. And uh, we've also uh, maybe uh, proposed to the uh, Business Center Rosa staff that um, in this endeavor, uh, we would like to see more participation and therefore they have agreed to uh, give the report a makeover. So um, the new report will be, uh, Business Center Rosa will be leading the new report. So we're very excited about that. And I will be providing uh, a lot of the figures that eventually go on that report as well. Uh, the report, of course, will uh, be in accordance with the with the work plan. Um, so given that it's uh, getting to the end of the year, I believe the timeline for the report will be uh, sometime around December, sometime possibly in January, not violating the ordinance, but we definitely are trying to give a fresh look to the annual report as well as the work plan. So we're very excited about that. And we also want to open it up for discussion here with uh, questions uh, and comments from the board as to what exactly do we need to have on that report as well. We currently um, uh, state things such as uh, hotel occupancy. So these are some of the trends and such, uh, annual uh, average daily rates, ADRs, I mean, uh, travel trends and impacts, hospitality industry, workforce information, airport traffic uh, trends and such. Uh, but we could definitely provide more or provide less. So I'd like to open it up for discussion. Let me rather some feedback. If you're taking a, a look at the uh, report lately, but if we were able to track room nights generated by events that we've supported. I think that would be good to add to the report if we could get an accurate. Track room nights 
from the sponsorship that we've yeah. given. If we could get an accurate number, that, that might be something worth putting in our report. We can get something close, yes. We, we, we've, been, we've been trying very hard to, yeah, to track those things a lot better in the past. So yeah, I, I think, and I think I got that to, to our list. Uh, yeah, Janelle has provided uh, uh, a, an outline, which is very nice. So we're definitely going to make more of a robust annual report as well as the work plan. Um, but in the report, we also include uh, TOT information, uh, previous year financial summaries, current calendar year financial summary. So there's definitely a lot of information, but now's the time to invite any other ideas. That really was hard to act. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Todd. Um, no, agree. Yeah, we can um, we can also list the the partners, the hotel partners that were involved in each of the events because we we have that on our recaps already. So a lot of people come in yeah. like country summer, for example. Yeah. A lot of people come in for that event. We don't necessarily have a rate for them, but on Saturday you see you know, <laughs> right. twenty five exactly. people walking around in cowboy hats and boots. But this year we did partner with AC, and they had all of their yeah. We already know that they had all of their um, their event stuff at the AC instead of in their parks. So we we're excited about that move. Um, and uh, yeah, we can absolutely include that in the in the annual report. I think there's a lot of things in there that we don't need anymore. Like we don't need all of three pages of PR mentions, right? Like we can do that in one page. So yeah, I've, I've made some recommendations. I'm happy to share it. Okay, any other comments? All right, public comments. Yeah, thank you. So that report is really important. Every year we're supposed to have an opportunity to wage our objections and I can object to the fact that there isn't somebody seated on this board that represents the tax collecting BIA segment in the short term rental. Uh, since that is a legal activity, we collect the BIA, we deserve to have representation. Scratching further at these BIAs, what we found actually is some interesting information about how long these BIAs were to last. This is a tax that was served on the visiting public ostensibly as an assessment for the lodging owner. But under state law, that originally was capped at five years uh, with a 10-year maximum run. You can renew it after five years, but then it's capped at 10 years because the idea of the assessment was to accomplish some sort of asset growth, and improvement, beautification, not ongoing financial support for for-profit making events. I mean, that's really outrageous. So the lack of representation. And then when we talk about data, in past years what we saw is incredible exaggerations over data. For instance, at the visitor center claiming 60,000 people visited there, we staked it out. At most, our extrapolations would point to about 6,000 visitors. Truly on a very busy day last week with the concerts, they weren't even open. They don't even take the time to roll out a display of brochures about our city. Now, I assume that that event, it's the Railroad Square Music Festival, received probably SRTBIA money as, as well as community money. So you would think that, oh my gosh, we need to prepare for out-of-town guests. Let's get the literature in front of them. After all, there's people paying for that literature to be placed there. One is a marketing scheme through the chamber. Another is through uh, Visit California. They pay to have that information distributed to out-of-town guests. Here's an event, ostensibly with out-of-town guests, no literature. In other words, it's a little bit of a scheme. It's, it's actually more than a little bit. It's a lot of a scheme. <laughs> and so... The, that has to be noted. That, that really needs to be noted, not just in public comments, but when we look at the data, and this really proves our point about these BIAs as well, you rest heavily on the data that's created by Sonoma County Tourism. It's almost like you repeat it verbatim. And so the money that, the tax money that's collected and spent at Sonoma County Tourism is shilled over through the SRTBIA as like, oh, look at the work that we did. No, you didn't do that work. That's not reflective of that tax money that was collected from the visiting public. 
And not only that, we're at a tax question with the TOT. Now, of course, the city's mom as to what the total burden is, even though we have a state law that says you must disclose all costs. If you're a lodger, you can't all of a sudden charge somebody for cleaning when they get their internet connection. But yet our city doesn't have that same commitment to its citizens, of which family members, they're traveling. People do travel into town for medical appointments when they're burned out, when they have a power shut off. Damn right they're using lodging here. And they're suffering through what, 11, 15, or 14, and now 16% tax? That's incredible. And you can't even be honest about it. Thank you. All right, moving on to uh, item nine, uh, department reports. Do we have any reports from the department? I have a couple of things to share, Chair. Uh, we do have a few board seats that I believe are going to be expiring soon. Uh, and I have been talking with um, our other city departmental uh, cohorts to look into what the proper process will be to, to backfill those seats. Uh, we will likely be sticking very closely to the ordinance and to the council policy, uh, which is supplemental to the ordinance and bring those seats, even renewing seats back to council for ratification. I think in the past, uh, we've been a little bit more lax on renewing seats, um, but we want to just make sure that council has every opportunity to continue to interview and ask questions and that the either appointment of new board members or the renewal of board members is going through a real robust public process. Uh, so as we get more information about that and what that process would look like, um, Stephen, you just went through the process um, yourself, and so you know what it's like to sit in chambers and answer questions from council. Be very similar to that or to what all of you went through in the past, uh, but we'll bring that forward at another time. Uh, the other thing that I would like to mention is that uh, city staff, myself, also in uh, discussion with our department head, um, we're recognizing that the ordinance itself and the council policy supplemental to the ordinance uh, aspects of it may be dated uh, and things may need to be updated as well or there may need to be modifications made to that um, to the policy or the ordinance itself. So we will be agendizing again another discussion uh, to do a study session which will likely result in a recommendation to council to update the ordinance and update the policy. Again, that's just giving you an idea of what staff's working on. That's gonna be a future item that's gonna come in the future. Um, I don't have any other departmental reports. Meredith, do you have anything that you wanted to do? Okay, Thanks. all right, thank you very much. Yeah, Jack, I'm again, I open it up for public comments. Yeah, if, if someone uh, reports during department reports, yeah. we open it up. Okay. okay. Public comments? Yeah, thank you very much. Well, again, opportunity thank you, uh, Scott. The board. Yeah. Scott, thank you very much. We uh, appreciate that. We look forward to working on that question of uh, BIA appropriateness and policy. Um, and so one thing I do want to comment on, though, is I am a little bit concerned about the transparency in the documents. Uh, I granted on the agenda, uh, um, um, the gentleman said that the attachments were yesterday, but you guys have been working on the documents for quite some time. Uh, the scoring documents, the, the complete uh, array of documents are public documents. Um, and I think it would be it behoove this organization to be much more transparent because like I indicated earlier, this question of this outrageous spending with for-profit organizations is something that really deserves scrutiny, not just from hoteliers and people that are assessing this tax on their visitors, but the general public. Eric, do you, I'm, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, through the chair, uh, your comment would need to be specific to the comments that I made during the departmental report section. I think you're commenting on something separate uh, from the two reports that Thank I you. made. Sure. So okay. what, what, I'm, what I would suggest is um, I'm interested in some of your thoughts about STRs and not being represented. Why don't I give you my card after this meeting? Sure. And let's have a conversation. That'd be great. Um, Thank you. And I don't mean to, to shut you down, but um, it would be appropriate as a commenter to either comment on the, um, the board seats discussion right. or the updating of the ordinance and the, and the council policy. Um, the transparency discussion would have been better 
during the non-agenda um, items section of public comment. Thank you. Well, we can agree to disagree on that because yes. certainly policy goes to transparency. Sure. It goes to the way the meetings are run. And my comment, if I need to repeat it again, about not having representation for the people that collect the tax or the assessment, uh, certainly should be noted. But of course, Scott, my door's always open. I look forward to talking to you not only about whatever issues yeah. and the event that we're planning, but uh, you know whatever's on your mind. Okay. Uh, certainly, you know we, we have a huge spirit of cooperation. But thank you. I, look forward I would actually I would like to invite you to our stakeholder meeting. Um, in a couple weeks as well. So I, I think right. I have your email, but yeah. if you don't mind, just. But if sure, you sure. Can, yeah, you can reach me at truthintourism yeah. at gmail.com. Got it. So it's right. Yes, me. it's and it it will be virtual and um, right. in person at the Hampton. So uh, I, yeah, if you would like to come and just really kind of, we could like kind of dig into all the marketing and I don't know. We really dig into all the things that the, that the business Santa Rosa does, not so much just the events part. You and I'd love having you. Right. Great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I look forward to that. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you for that clarification. And uh, item number 10, uh, we're going to adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.